Okay, we're good. Hey, Kai Shimo. Same thing again. Alright, we're turning it over to the boss here. So we're going to start with this one. So this is this is called the Taiji Two, T A I J I Taiji, which is the art form we're practicing. Which I spell in America Tai Chi, but there, we can talk about that later. It's actually Tai Chi. Most Americans spell it T A I C H I incorrect. Tai Chi. And this is not the yin yang chart, it's the Tai Chi chart. Tai Chi picture. He's guessing you've probably seen this. Do you know what it means? Does anybody know what it means? The balance. King Hung, uh, Tian Di, yin, yin Yang. There is some of the light in the dark and dark in the light. She said, Hey, yo, bye, bye, yo, hey. King Hung. Harmony. This is our human being. Yin Yang is a human being. This is the common. 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 This is the root of all life on planet Earth. This is what all people share, regardless of their faith, religion, belief systems. We all come from yin and yang. It's a, it's a, it's, it's a representation of harmony as understood by the ancient Chinese people. It's also the attitude of life or the state of life. We know that life cannot be separated from energy. So we have yang energy and yin energy. But the, in the middle of the yang energy, there's yin. And the, the middle of the yin has yang, like Chris said. It's, it's like a planet. So the yang side is the side facing the sun. And the opposite side of the earth is in night, that's the yin side. If I was the sun, the earth has its, or, the earth has its orbit and it has its rotation. So, so it's got its direct orbit and then it's got a rotation on its on its pole. Okay. So you guys all your answers were right. So Okay, so so the most basic understanding is that this is this is the whole of life, and within it there's yin and yang, and without yin and yang there is no life. Okay. This is another Taiji picture. So this has to do with how yin and yang uh, transform during the day, how they move through cycles during the day. So this this top one, this little guy up here, eleven to one, looks like that. In our five This is your gall. This is your gall. This is your gallbladder, and it's called zi zi zi. Zi shi. This is your gallbladder, eleven to one right here. One to three. Oh, it's 1 to 3 a.m. Oh. You said that was liver before. But... Well, this is, this is gallbladder. 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 Yeah. So gallbladder and liver are right next to each other. Yeah. So 11 to 1 is the is the um, the gallbladder, 
and it corresponds to z, the z hour. So these organs are connected inside the body, right? They, 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 they house each other. So here's the important aspect of this is that it's it's in there that the yang qi is born every night. Right? The yin reaches its zenith or its maximum, and then as soon as it you go past midnight, yang energy is born, starts to grow. Even though it's dark, it's quiet, but underneath it, what's hidden is that yang is being born and growing. And that relates to your, uh, your gallbladder. And so the gallbladder holds a special place in Chinese medicine and in our bodies. So if, if, if at this time from 11 p.m. to 1 a.m. when the yang energy begins to grow, if you're awake and not asleep during that time, you don't get replenishment of yang energy. <coughs> you don't get to restore your yang because you're not resting during that, that, that repair process. So then the energy goes from the, the gallbladder to the liver. And what is the liver's function? You're getting like a Chinese energetic anatomy lesson. What is the liver's function? It stores our blood. It stores blood, different than Western. This Chinese physiology. So it stores our blood. It's like a, a warehouse of blood. Remember we talked about all the organs store something vital, right? The, the liver, spleen, kidney, uh, lungs, and heart. Yeah, the zong, the zong, five zong, they store. So during this time period, if we're asleep, the liver gets repaired, and then its ability to store blood is enhanced. So if you're always awake during this time, your liver slowly becomes weaker and weaker, and then eventually you get liver blood deficiency. So from 3 to 5 a.m., Anybody know where the chi goes? To the lung. Three to five, this is lung. Fei, if you want to study Chinese, F-E-I, Fei. So that's when your body's energy is restoring and healing your lungs. Now, if you're still awake at this time, you're going to have no chi left in the gas tank tomorrow morning. So what, what if you wake store? up then? They store chi. They, they extract qi from the air. What if you wake up then? Uh, qi, right? Mm. They store the qi. It is a zong organ. And it also, so there's also spirits. Every organ has a psychological, spiritual aspect. And the liver and the lung have the hun and the po. The po is in the lung. We can talk more about that. We can do a, a lecture on that, but it's, it's, it's part of you. It's, it's an aspect of your spirit. So in Chinese medicine, the heart is believed to have the entire spirit, but like a prism, it, 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 it sends the spirit out a piece of itself into the liver, into the lungs, into the kidney, into the spleen, and into the liver. It goes out into the, all the five zong like a prism. And so even, so the heart has, is the emperor spirit but it has pieces of itself out doing jobs in those other organs. And they each have a psychological, mental, emotional, spiritual attributes that are mm. useful clinically. Mm. And, and as an alchemist for your, of your own life, they're useful. The storing, is this why you want to exercise 
like be doing martial arts really early in the morning, the three to five period when people wake up, you know, martial arts really early and do their exercises because it enhances the storage of the chi. Now, at, at this time, the lungs need to work on themselves to repair themselves. But there, but you're right. In another way, you're right about waking up early. Yeah. Let's see if he gets to that. Okay. So now at five to seven a.m., large intestine. The energy goes into your large intestine. Five to seven. And this is when you start to wake up, and the the qi in your large intestine is strong. So Guess what? This is the best time for in terms of nourishing life. Yeah. Around six a.m., you should visit. You should visit the word the porcelain god. Yes, and, and do the sneakers. And yeah, you should, that's right. <laughs> so right around 6 a.m., more or less, if that's if you have a bowel movement, that's very, very good sign for your health. I'd say you can have a bowel movement at 6 a.m. And then from 7 to 9, it goes to the stomach. stomach. So does it make sense? You wake up, you evacuate your bowels, and then seven to nine, the cheese in your stomach, that's a good time to eat breakfast. Can you see the white growing? Is the yang growing yeah. in the picture? And then by, can you see how big it gets around six or seven a.m., how much wider it is? And guess what's coming up at that time? The sun, right? The light is dawning, and you can see it reflected in this chart. Says, yeah, you can eat breakfast at this time, like you guys were talking about. You get up. So also another sign of nourishing life is that if between seven and nine you have a strong appetite, that's a sign of health. It's a sign of strength. If you don't have any appetite during that time, that could be a sign of a, of some imbalance in your body. So 9 to 11, the, the energy of the, enters your spleen. So what does the spleen do? It takes the food that's been rotten and ripened in the stomach and it extracts the nutrients from it. Kind of the way we think of the pancreas as producing enzymes to extract the nutrients from food. The spleen pancreas was part of the same organ in Chinese medicine, is part of the same organ. Yang qi is still growing now, still, still growing. And so the spleen extracts the nutrients from the food and the qi, and distributes it to all the organs, the blood vessels, the bones, everything you need. Now you can look at it this way. Now the sun has reached its zenith in the sky. Yang Qi is at its maximum. It's the time of the heart, the emperor. Yeah. So if we eat our largest meal at 12 noon, we have the most ability to absorb the nutrients from it because our digestion is at its highest. Because the fire of digestion cannot but reflect the fire of the sun and of nature. If 
If you eat, if you eat a meal after twelve, you uh, damage or insult your digestive fire. So don't eat anything after. So, 如果你没吃，你到十二点没有吃到东西，应该怎么怎么办？啊，在中国的养生学里边有一个说法叫过午不食，就不吃了。Okay. Then you fast. Wait, question. Okay. Make sure you guys sleep. Don't eat. 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 Don't
，如果是啊、呃、养生的话，你只能吃八分饱，就是百分之八十。对。So some people、uh, get, you know, their eyes are bigger than their stomach, so they eat a big lunch because they think, oh, the digestive fire is at its highest. But now yang is declining, and yang is your digestive fire. It's the function of your digestion. So if you eat, if you overeat, then now your body is going to have to use more yang qi, and yang qi is already declining by nature. So it's best to eat up to about eighty percent full, according to nourishing life principles. So then, should largest meal be breakfast? 你觉得早点还是呃中午饭应该是最大的？你你早上要吃多一点还是中午吃多一点？应该是。Uh, your lunch could be slightly larger than your breakfast. Yeah, but your your breakfast should be nutrient dense. And what percentage? Like if, it, if lunch is eighty percent full, what percentage is breakfast? If lunch is eighty percent full, what percentage is breakfast? If lunch is eighty percent full, what percentage is breakfast? If lunch is eighty percent full, what percentage is breakfast? If lunch is eighty percent full, what percentage is breakfast? If lunch is eighty percent full, what percentage is breakfast? You have to. You have to. It's hard to say. If you have a really good appetite, you can eat more. If your appetite is weak, you got to eat a little less. But nutrient dense. But nutrient dense. And I've had this conversation with him before, and he says part of nutrient dense is protein. Having protein at breakfast is important. 是不是要蛋白质？对。Hydration and protein are the main goals of the breakfast. Eggs. 蛋白质，碳水化合物。But mineral rich, vitamin rich, protein rich, hydrating. What about fats? Uh, fat. Ma. Morning, you should eat some fat. Or fat. You say that fat is good. If we eat fat, we are usually looking at the elderly people. Yeah. So the nourishing life principles have you eating、uh, more light and simple foods, so less fat, less oil. 甜的，咸的，甜的会让人的血变得很稠，然后血液流动很慢。So so sugary foods, sweet foods make your blood sticky. It sticks together. So you don't want to have a lot of of、uh, sweet foods. So then, the, when the blood becomes sticky,、uh, the process of blood circulation becomes difficult because the blood is thick and sticky from the sugar. 对我们对我们的健康非常有害。And this is a very major impact on our on our health. 所以糖一定要注意少吃。So really important for, as a nourishing life practitioner to、uh, lessen or eliminate your consumption of sweet foods. Does that include fruits? Not sweet one, huh? Sweet one, also need to eat less. Eat too much, you don't want to eat. Eat too much, you don't want to eat. Some some fruit is okay, but not too much fruit. And then what about your bread and your carbs? We eat things to emphasize a balance. Yeah. Eat too much, you don't want to eat. So you you know so Chinese culture has cultural、um, specifics. For example, they eat rice with every meal, but compared to American. You know, diet. Their carbohydrate intake is much lower. If you look at the overall diet. Then this fruit, I look at. Some have diabetes. For example, grapes, very sweet, 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 very 咸的东西吃多了会让那个我们的血液凝固起来，就像我们杀鸡，我不知道外国人杀鸡有没有这个习惯。杀鸡他把那个鸡血要要鸡血嘛，他就把那个碗里边放一点那个盐，放一点水，然后那个鸡血下去就会冻成一块。就是如果我们盐吃多了，我们的血液会在血管里边形成一块一块，非常危险。真的吗？是。He says so. Salt has has an effect on blood coagulation.、He、says in China when they kill a chicken,、um, they put salt in the bowl, and it makes the blood turn into like a gelatin. The salt does. It has a way of making it stick together into like a jelly, and so it does the same thing to our blood. 
所以在中国人的养生概念里边说，痰是邪愁的愁，那个炎是愁愁的意思是黏黏的。对对,对，那这个这个痰的。